Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! Hey, hey, folks. Here we are. I think it's Halloween-ish. Ah, it's past. Oh, it's past. The uh, ghost of Christmas past. Are you a Halloween guy? You like Halloween? Did you ever get into it? Is it I, fun? I like it. I had memories of trick-or-treating. I half-assed a lot of costumes. I stole a lot of candy. I egged a few houses and TP'd a few Native Americans. I TP'd? Yes. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. um, was more terrorist than uh, Indian. That's all the same. They were terrorists, if you ask me. Oh, uh, yeah. We came here just to poke around, see yep. what's going on, you know, uh-huh. and all of a sudden they start shooting arrows at us and, and, and tomahawk chopping us. Scalping. And so we had to uh, fuck them up, take yeah. their shit. Well, we are the Braves for uh, handling these savages. Oh, land of the free, home of the brave. Aha. Uh-huh. No question about it. You know the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, ends at a question. Wait. It's a how, question mark. How so? Well, I saw I was watching a game, and I remember it was like it was like a hockey game, and it was happening in Canada, and I was watching on the big screen, and it ended. They were singing the Star Spangled Banner, and it ended in a question mark, and I was like, "They're trying to call us cowards." I was like a young guy, <laughs> but the last line is, "Oh, say does that Star Spangled, Spangled Banner, Banner yet, wave. yet wave?" It's a question. Yeah. How oh, does it? But I think they're saying, oh, man, does it? Yeah, but they're saying, like, is it still there or whatever? But it ends with land of the free, home of the brave, but it's still the same sentence. Right. So when you see it written out, it's like, home of the brave? Yeah. So it looks like that's the question. Because I remember when I was a young guy, you know, we were, we were going to Iraq, and I was like, wait, number one, are you kidding? <laughs> they deserve it. Yeah, also weird that uh, the guy who wrote that, I don't feel like he gets any his due. F. Francis Scott Keys. Hey, Alicia yeah. Keys is dead. Is that right? No, oh, she's right. black. He might have been black. You never know. That's true. It That's the, true. Uh, They're good 1300s. musically. Oh, are they ever? Oh. Athletics, music, penis. Oh yeah, big tap time. dancing. Very fast. Yeah, yeah. Quick twitch. Yep. Michael J. Fox. Uh, but wait, you're watching on the big screen. With the hockey. Yeah. It's tough to go to these events and not look at that screen. Well, this is just the words of the Star Spangled ah, Banner. Ah, I see. So you're looking up there. And then, yeah, but the Jumbotrons are so jumbo. Jumbo, shrimp. It's hard not to look. You're right. Well, any kind of screen, yes. your face is just drawn to it. Yeah, even a screen door. Got to look in. Screen door slams Mary's dressways. But you're at the cellar, even, and someone's talking, and you just yeah. naturally just go... Because you want to see this yeah. movement. It's just There's a movement. natural thing. And it's a video of a guy moving or a gal, and you might even not even like the gal or the guy, but it's movement. I don't like any gals. They stink. Oh, damn. Take don't, that. Don't touch the camera, cat. Now, the cat is right uh, near the camera. No! Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's going to be a hell of a shot. Oh, don't. Hey, Greg. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Yo. Come here. Dickless, oh. queef, anal. This way. I don't think you can't even hear. Hey, hey. Right over here. I think he's deaf and blind. Hey, hey. Lives. hey we got some jam. nip over here. Ho, oh, oh. ho. We got a mouse here. Look at that mouse. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. There yep. you go. That's yeah. going to be a great shot, though. I, but I'm worried he juked it a little bit. Maybe he breathed oh, on it wrong. No juke. I didn't see any juke. All right. Don't juke. Juke bucks. Yeah, juice bucks. Um, but Halloween was fun. When I was a kid, I never didn't trick or treat. My next door, across the street, was Eric Chalmers. You know him? Uh, Big Chalmy. Big Chalm. And, and he was fun. And they had the fun Halloween house. Uh-huh. Still going? Good, good. Great. Mark left. The camera's broken. It's a whole thing. It's Shelbo. Got a new camera. So they would have scary music. And he did his own little haunted house thing. He'd dress up as Dracula. Ooh. And then we had a whole production. And my role I got to play was I, I was like a trick-or-treater, so I would wear like a whatever, Superboy or whatever costume. Ooh, that's hot. And I would walk up like I'm trick-or-treating, and I would wait for other kids to be trick-or-treating. I would uh-huh. walk with them. Yep. And then Jim Cranshaw, you remember Cranshaw? Sure, Cran. He'd come running out in like a devil costume or whatever and like form tackle me 
And then uh, Eric Chalmers would bite Uncle Dale on the neck, and he'd go, oh, and fall down. We had a whole thing. That's great. And we scared the fuck out of the neighborhood. The music would be playing. It was really my favorite thing. I, I loved it. I love that. I love coming together. I love the autumn air. I love the scaring the kids and then fucking them and the candy and the decorations. It's great. It's fascinating. Isn't it weird? I was thinking about this the other day when I was driving wherever the fuck we were. Mm. I can't remember. But isn't it funny, like, if you came from another country or planet or town, and you just came to the States, and you're like, why is there dead bodies all over the oh, floor? What yeah. a, it's a strange holiday, isn't it's it? It's very strange. It's spooky. The whole thing is death, blood, witches, ghouls, goblins. It's kooky. And sluts. And sluts. It's all slutty shit. Yeah, which, uh, you know, nobody's complaining about. No. Well, probably some people, but sure. not us. Fat women, I assume. But, but it, it's funny to be like, ah, I'm visiting my uncle in America, and then you come in October, and there's like skull hands sticking out of the ground, right, and right. Blood, which is interesting, too, because it's sort of uh, propping up murder. Well, we're cool with murder here. Isn't that weird? It's like sex is bad, uh, offending people with like gays and groups is bad, but... Uh, True crime is through the roof. Serial killers are through the roof. Uh, Murder jokes where you go, hey, I killed my dad. They go, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, that's way worse than the gay joke, by the way. Yeah, good point. I never got that. That, That's the feelings. Hurting a feelings of a group is no dice. But, uh, hey, I'm going to kill myself. They're like, this guy's suicidal. Well, even that's getting dicey now. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I say it 40 times a set, and people start to get weird. And now the term is un... Unalive or... Unalive. The Undead? No, that's, that's a, a movie, zombie. I think. Yeah. No, there's like... Unforgiven. Unlife for it. It's there's some new PC death term. Really? Yeah. It's, unalive. It's un, unalive. I think it's unalive. Really? Yeah. Man, alive. I don't know that one. Unalive. What does that mean? Un- it means you're not... It means dead. Ah. But instead of dead, you say unlife or... That's something fucking stupid like that. I can't remember. Okay. It's unalive. I mean, we're getting out of hand now. It's a person of size is fat, and um, dick of man is gay. I can't keep up. Isle of man. I think tall is no good. I think I'm like... Tall uh, is out? Tall is a compliment. I'm lengthy. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess for a lady, they don't want to be tall. No. It's... Tall women are really gross. <laughs> I think, we, I think I said that before. They have a tough go at it. They're always like, oh, I can't get laid, and uh, I'm taller than all the boys. And they put on a pair of heels. Forget it. And, oh, it's over. But I look, I'm not a, I'm not a tall man, but I, I don't mind a big tree of a skank. I do. I find it very off-putting. Really? And just yucky. Yeah, they shouldn't be allowed to be out and about. But. Well, maybe we do a little Tanya Harding and take those legs down a peg. Yeah, just a couple uh, from the shin down, like soft the shin and <laughs> tape the feet to the, the broken shins. Yeah, like a comedy gag with the knee and the shoe. Do you like short? How short can you go? Sometimes too short is wacky. I'm like, how's it all fit? You got organs in there, and uh, are you wearing a diaper? Can I throw you around the room? It's sometimes too short is weird. Organs trail. Well, the woman I got herpes from, she was very short, almost midget. Wow. Like she was like a, like a half an inch, like a pair of heels away from being a midget or a little person, excuse me. I don't like the too short, which I think is a rapper. I don't like the too short because uh, I feel like the lady form can't be all the way there. Mm. It's all it's all compacted <laughs> in, you know? So you can't have all the curvy with the scurvy. Interesting. Now, th- people say they like tall men. Yes. But, I mean, I do a bit about this. I'm just very lanky, which is not as good. I mean, look at these legs. They're like, it- it's- I'm all leg. Leg is good. I don't think leg is great. I think it's a power thing. They're looking up at you, literally. I, I look up to you. Well, they need someone to be taller than them, so that's yes. important. Because a guy that's shorter is stupid. But yeah. when I was a kid, the short guys were the cool ones. What? Yes, I'm telling you. They were all cool because they-, they walked in a... Cool way or something like that. Right. I remember being You're like, oh, they look cool. like a bag of bag of cheese. Yeah, exactly. And then the muscularly, it's a better body when you're more compact. You think? You're long, look how long. Right. Long is naturally skinny. When you lengthen, right. you become skinny. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I hear was, you there. But it's tall let, and fat too. Let, yeah, oh yeah, the big and tall store. Right. Now, what about these gals, though? Because they want to equal everything, equilibrium, equal the sugar packet. But they want the guy taller. So it's like you want to be everywhere else you want even, but you still like a taller man. That shows that biology is real. 
Hmm. You can't beat primal nature and urges and all that shit. What do you mean? Well, because you want everything, being a man and a me are equal. Uh, We're all the same, but I still want to be smaller than you. Right. You know, the, the femininity still kicks in a little. Yeah, yeah. You still want to, you want him to be bigger. You don't want a little boy. Yeah, and they don't want to be able to beat up a guy. I don't feel like, I don't feel like a, a lot of women out there, maybe there's some in the minority there, but you don't want to be able to beat up your husband. Yeah, you want him to be able to beat you up but not beat you up. That's what you want. That's the key. That's you want good. him to be like, hey, be nice to me, but if if you know, I called your mother a twat, you should be able to beat the yes. shit out of me. Can but won't. Can but won't. There you go. That's a good uh, presidential slogan. That's my uh, gay sex policy. I can. Can but won't. Sure. I but can sometimes but will. do. Put it in um, my can. Now, how about this? This goes back a ways. A couple weeks ago, we were in uh, Indian Wells, California, Sarah and I, you might remember. Quit bragging. Beautiful place. I think it's Native American Wells. It's lovely down there. Uh Uh-huh. So we were down there, and we're staying at a resort casino. And these resort casinos, they feel like it's just a little naughty, doesn't it? How do you you mean? Well, it's casino. So anytime there's gambling, it just Uh feels a little bit... Degenerity? Yeah, there's always like a limp and some drug yes, folks and some slime. poor people. It's a little nerve wracking. We were leaving with all of our luggage. We saw these two like scratchy, junky people with like scratch tickets everywhere. Oh, wow. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, ah, shit. Like, what's stopping them from just being like, all right, give me that suitcase? Sure, yeah. And I would be like, no, no. And then they just throw a shoe at me or whatever. Could be worse. Uh, you, you know what I mean? You're just seeing two like broken people. They are all fat and crazy and scratched up and yeah. track marks, just like a mess. The meth people they pick at themselves. It's it's bad news. It's nasty. So, but I'm walking by with like a, a suitcase full of cash and a, a pair of <laughs> New Balance. Sure, they could have jacked me up. Yeah, yeah, but. I guess they just, I don't know. Why didn't they? Maybe it's a different breed over there. Well, I think they don't have the energy, probably. And it is. Ah. There is repercussions if they get caught. Sure, go sure. to jail or whatever. But it's still nerve-wracking. But So we're at the resort casino, uh, Agua Caliente. Oh, hot water. That's right. Spicy water. I think just hot. Okay, hot water. Is that right? I thought Caliente means hot, right? Yeah. Or does it mean spicy? That's a good question. Well, we say both. I think hot means spicy here. Yeah, here it does. Caliente. Yeah, we got Caliente Cab. It's a Mexican joint over here, which I guess means hot cab, which doesn't sound good. No. Especially if it's a wine. Hot Cabernet. <laughs> but, uh, uh-oh, cat's pissed. But, yeah, uh, Caliente Spa, Agua, got so it. So, Agua Caliente in uh, Rancho Mirage. Jesus. What, what are you, in Mexico here? We're going full Hispaniol. Well, California's a little Mexico. Yeah, I guess, or, or a big Mexico. It's pretty close. So yeah. I'm in the Rancho Mirage Agua Caliente. Okay. Por favor. See. Si. Uh, so we go, we're in there. The last night, we come home. We go out to tennis. We have a great time. Have some dinner. We went to a place called JJ's in Palm Springs, one of these old Mexican restaurants. I established love it. 1984. Ah, not that old. That's pretty old now. We're old. That's 36 years old. All right, all right. In this day good. and age, in this uh, economy, this market? I guess you're right, especially, but I'm 83. Right. So I guess I hear, uh, hey, it's old. I think I thought you were going to go back to the 1580s. Well, this is California. Nothing's old in That's California. That's true. It's the great white west. Isn't it weird? Like, you, you grow up in, I grew up in New England, you're in New Orleans, it's like, Everything's from the 1700s, 1800s. Yes. This house is 200 years Old old, this beer. restaurant, the bar. Chowder. Then you go to Europe, and you're like, this is like, you know, from 890. Right. And then you go to the Middle, the Middle East, East, and then you were like, we weren't even before the uh, Wailing Christmas. Wailing Wall and the, the Dead Scroll and the Sea. Yeah, I went there. Oh, yeah. It wasn't great. Nah. It was dead. But, so we go to the... This place, JJ's, which is nice, and then you sit and you're like, well, I love this place, and because it's all, it's all pipes, Jerry. It's all Urban mm. Outfitters now. It's Palm yes. Springs. Everything's very cool. It gets taken over. So 1984 is old now. Right. So we go in there, and we're the only two in there. It's authentic. It's got a nice feel. Yeah, I love that. It's, you can feel it in the walls. There's some wear and tear, some uh, patina. What's patina? Patina means a little, uh, it's a little scuff on it, but it, it gives it character. Ah. Oh. You know, like a hot old guy with, with uh, gray hair. Rick Patina. There you go. 
So we go in there, and the lady comes over. She's super nice. And we're just high-fiving for going to the cool place. We didn't go to Chipotle yes. or Burger King. We went to the cool JJ's. Free chips? I don't know if they were free, but we got oh, chips. All right. I love when they just you sit down, they just pop the chips and salsa right in your face. They did bring free chips. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't have queso, because the Mexico, that's not, that's only Tex-Mex has queso. Ah. Mex, no queso. I did not know that. You got to go to Texas if you want queso. I got to do my Texas. Uh, but so we sit Check. down there. Keep going. Then a, lady, a, a guy comes in. He's a regular. And the, the, the proprietor greets him and goes, hey, welcome. Bienvenue or whatever. And the guy goes, hey, JJ. Oh, wow. We're sitting with JJ. He's JJ. Oh, JJ's still cooking. But JJ, yeah. <laughs> so I felt great because I was like, okay, this is really JJ's. We really did it. We got the place. Was he Mexican? Oh, yeah. All right. Probably Build that wall. Jose, Jose. So he came over and he goes, hey, I just wanted to say thanks for coming. No we're like, we love this place. And they're having a hard time because COVID and everything. Sure, sure. And so he was so grateful and he was doing this shit and blessing us and uh, great restaurant. So if you're ever in Palm Springs, go hit up JJ's. Yeah, I love it. I love an old Mexican. I love authentic, nice, out of the way, all that bullshit. Yeah, so I we, know. Me too. So we go there. We go back to the Caliente Agua Caliente Rancho Mirage. Got it, got We're it. We get in the elevator, and hey, this is a sensitive topic, so I don't want to get Ooh. too weird here. Have I given you my theory on elevators? Mm. It's the last place on Earth where you have to be in a small place with a stranger for a certain amount of time. Everything is groomed now. You got your Delta Comfort, you got your Uber Plus, you got your apartment or whatever. You can get away from people pretty good, but that elevator, I don't care if you're a uh, Rockefeller or, or Haley Joel Osment, you're getting into an elevator with some strangers for a little bit. That's a good point. Well, bathroom stalls are like that. I'm always jammed in there with another guy. Oh, uh, well, you got to stop doing the tap on the tile. Uh, but no, it's a good point. Elevators are interesting and they're fascinating too because there was like this study online or YouTube somewhere where they can you can influence how people stand in an elevator. Mm. Like sometimes you stand in a circle, people will just naturally stand in a circle. If you're facing that side of the wall, people will just naturally face that way. Because there's no specific way to face in yes, an elevator. Yes, interesting. It's so it's, you can really like get weird where you're like, we're single file, we're in a box, we're in a corner. Right. I go straight corner. I, wanna, I always go corner too. Yeah, leave the lady alone. Have you ever heard that Eddie Murphy story? I don't know if I have. Eddie Murphy, you know, height of his powers. He's at a he goes to some building in Midtown. You know, he's going up to see an agent, and it's this nice skyscraper, and he's got big black glasses on, big black leather, and he's with all his giant big black guys, mm. and he's got his goons, he's got his posse, his uh, entourage. Sure, they're all jammed into this elevator, and this. You know, executive or whatever CEO white woman with the heels and the pantsuit is running on. It's the 80s. She's a cute blonde lady. Oh, hold that elevator. And she gets on and she just looks back and it's seven black guys just with full regalia on. And she, you know, it's the 80s. It's a different time. Sure. And you could tell she's visibly frightened. And she's like clenching her pocketbook and uh, grabbing her clit. And Eddie Murphy looks back like, this is hilarious how scared she is. And he goes, on three. And they go, one, two, three. Get her! And she drops to the floor and goes, oh, my God, oh, my God! Oh, <laughs> They wow. all just start laughing. Oh, God. Yeah, good times. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that is terrifying for I this mean, woman. Yeah, you can't blame her. I would have done the same thing. I mean, you know me. A guy asks for change, and I run for the hills. Yeah, I would have just started blowing the biggest one. I heard that's the move in jail. Yeah, so that's what I do at my parents' house. But, um, <laughs> sure, Thanksgiving's coming up. <laughs> a lot of blowjobs from my mom, but... Um, <laughs> so... Where am I on this story? Oh, sorry, oh we got the elevator. Sorry, elevator. Agre Caliente. Ranchero Elev Cucamonga. How do you say elevator? Elevate. Elevato. Uh, Elvato. Oh. Elchivato. I think Elvato is a dog or a cat. A uh, dog is perro. Perro? Gato is a cat. Gato. Yeah. Domo, maybe gato. Hey, bet, go, robato. Perro means dog and butt. Butt? But, not butt like asshole, but butt like. But uh, there's more to this sentence. However, so it's you're kind of like, I'm gay, dog. I don't blow guys on Wednesdays. <laughs> right, right. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that sounded like Morse code. Of all the things, I mean, why don't you just make up another word? Well, we got a few of those. Dog and butt. What are some examples? Well, like we got pretty. Hey, that she's a pretty lady, and uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty. I just pulled that out of my gato. 
Is that uh, or Pero? Yeah, that's similar. But dog and butt feel so. Well, we got foot and uh, I foot the bill. I don't know. We, oh, we yeah. got a few. Foot we got a few. Bill. I'm just pulling these out of thin jizz here. Foot the bill's good. Uh, what else is there? Tracy is a boy's name and girl's name. All That's right. not what we're doing. All right, all right. Different but, uh, category. Just kind of looking around here. Yeah. yeah. Book, Tracy? book them. Yeah, good point. <laughs> book them. Book them. And then there's a book. Yes. It's book, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Any tits. Let me get to this elevator. Let me just skip right ahead to the elevator. So Sarah and I get in the elevator. It's a little late at night, 1130-ish. Not crazy. We get on, and then you hear a, hold that door. Oh, there we go. I I grab the door. I hit the open button and stick my foot in there. You're a good man. And in comes, this is where it gets a little dicey and Uh spicy. Choctaw. No. Child. It's a person invalid in a dress like okay. a nice dress strapless up here Ooh. one of these and like a floppy down here two two pink and blue uh, nice outward like kind of 80s almost cindy, cindy loppery got it got it pair of heels mm. but clean shaven bald head with a real man face ah guy mug so it's kind of a uh a bald guy mug lopper dress. God, how the shoulders? Is pretty, it born a man? Pretty broad. Yeah, it feels like it, it was a man or it is still a man. Yeah, just a, but it, it left a lot for curiosity, pondering. We'll say it's not a Chappelle fan. I would imagine. Uh-huh. But this just looked like a dude in a dress. And sure. I, I, I'm a good person. So I go, hey, I saw... Uh, them coming sure so i said hey oh come on in and uh you know sarah grabbed her purse and acted like it was eddie murphy he got in the corner yeah yeah and we just went how do you do and have a good night how you how you doing but it felt like it was a bit of a uh a call person oh a lady of the night that's what it felt like they don't you the think because we're in a hotel resort a little bit of naughty business it's eleven thirty. no room key to speak of uh-huh and just had a little tiny purse and was acting a little suspicious i see like i was like how you doing and then there was just kind of like this mm. Mm. and I, i'm talking ball like cue ball ball wow no chest area whatsoever but a nice little dress what about a double a what do you mean battery oh the adam's apple yep mm. well women do have adam's apples well, tiny but small ones yeah, yeah. they got more of a like granny smith Adam's anal, but I didn't see much there. I didn't really look close because it's a quick elevator ride, four floors or whatever. And then we got off and walked up to his room. But uh, <laughs> it was interesting because we felt like maybe it's a uh, 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 escort. Escort. That's the word I'm looking for. There it is. Maybe it's an escort. But wouldn't you be upset if you were like, you know, I'm going to dabble in the trans game. Sure. And you get a full cue. Yeah. And you just get a non, you know, uh, Patrick a- Stewart over here or or, or uh, what's that guy's name? <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, napalm in the morning. Robert Duvall? Duvall. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, this was no Duvall. Well, Duvall's 115 now. <laughs> well, he's got a cue ball man face. This guy had a very raw, very round head. I'm trying to think of somebody more equivalent. I see. Maybe Matt Taibbi? Nah, I don't know. I mean, it was smooth as eggs. I mean, yeah. just a dark brown, not black, but like a tan, a white person. Jason Statham. Very tan, but more old. Mm. Like Matt Williams, the third baseman for the San Francisco Giants in like the 90s. Jeez, that's a sweet pull. pull. Maybe I'll pull up a photo Give of a Matt go. Williams and show you. Yeah, all right, because I want to get hard to this uh, I, noggin. And I think this is going to be... Well, what do you think of this? What are you making of this situation? I think you got something here, but I think... Uh, as a little consideré, if you go full trans uh, escort, you throw on a blonde wig. This is Holy it. This is exactly shit, it. I nailed that it. Perfect. That's exactly what he looks wow. like. Can we get a shot of this? Zoom Hold in up. on this photo. Matt Williams, everybody. How's it look? Hold on. Oh, damn it. You got the... Uh, there it is. It's the fucking 
cue ball. That's what he looked like. It, it might have been him. Matter of fact, I mean, this is California. Well, he was a catcher. I mean, this is... Um, Wasn't pitching. The big Marine, Matt the Bat. I mean, <laughs> this looks the like bat. him. He's from Bishop, California. Who oh, the hell's Bishop? Oh, man. Well, throw that guy in a dress and we might have an escort. I mean, this could be him. That, it looked exactly like that. But just picture... I mean, wouldn't you be upset if you were like, I'm going to get a little dicey? Because I, I, I got to tell you, I've been in hotels back in my single drinking days sure. in Vegas. And I thought, hey, if I'm ever going to suck a dick, this is the time and place. Get the yellow pages out and look sure. up D for dicks. Right. Yeah. And get one of them over. And, you know, I never did it, but I thought about it for a couple of weeks straight. And sure. <laughs> I get it. I mean, the yellow pages, that's mostly for the Asians. But uh, I get what you're putting down. Yeah, but uh, I thought maybe someone did that. And then you get that. Boom, boom, and you open the door and you the see Asian's old name. Matt Williams waving you home <laughs> in uh, my sister's prom dress. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. I don't know. I, I think she was, uh, or they or them, was going a little, getting a little too liberal with her, her, her ways there. Or maybe that guy requested, he goes, I want a real shiny dome coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe that's part of the kink. But the thing was, it was an off putting look at not off putting but like not a attractive man or woman yeah you know what i mean y- you want somebody that's the thing with um uh, now uh, by the way it could just be a person hanging out at the agua caliente but also true it just you know sometimes you just have a feel oh you just get a felt feel. like something but it moved it's gonna be uh you want Somebody, if you're going to get an escort, you want someone attractive either way. Of course. Even if you want a woman and they send a man, you at yeah. least want it to be like, you know, Michael Costa or somebody oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's hot. You want somebody, a handsome man. I mean, yeah. This is like uh, just a tweener. Yeah, that, that's a tough thing, too, about uh, the Vegas thing you mentioned is I've been in Vegas before, and you're at the bar, and you're drinking your sorrows away because you lost 20 grand at a roulette table. And then some good-looking young whippersnapper coos in a in a ball gown and a tube top goes, "Hey, you okay, buddy?" And you're like, "Whoa, <laughs> who's this? Who's this uh, kooky broad uh, chatting me up? Man, maybe maybe my luck's turning around." And then she's like, "I'm gonna go freshen up. You uh, you get ready and go buy an eight ball." And I'm like, "Oh my god, it's turning out to be a hell of a night." And then the bartender's going. Hey, don't do it, buddy. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, she's been working the whole night. She's done the whole room. She fucked the whole bar. I'm like, what? Nah, she's into me. And he's like, nah, you're crazy. That's uh, Jenny the prostitute. And you go, oh, damn it. I thought I had something. They're always doing the circular wax, those bartenders. Yeah, they got one rag and one spot, and they really hit it hard. Yeah, it's fun. Wax on, wax off. I used to bartend, and then my the manager would come in. And he goes, what are you doing? Because you I'd be watching TV. Because sometimes you see the bartender, they're sitting on the cooler, Facing back. It's always a good look. Like, here's the bar, and they're sitting there watching the thing, and they go, hey, welcome in. Come on in. What can I get you? you I, know? Yeah, I mean, you got a cool look. I, I, I think that's a lazy employee. Well, that's what he said. You're on his side, I guess, because he <laughs> goes, what is it? You got to watch. But I'm talking no customers have come. Oh, okay, okay. Zero people. First customer of the day. It's not... 11.15 on New Year's Eve, and I'm sitting in the cooler watching uh, Dick Clark. Well, what does he want you to do? Inventory and then uh, wipe the dust off the bottles, maybe re- replace the keg? Exactly. He wants you to dust the bottles and uh, clean the ashtrays sure. and, and blow them, I guess. I mean, you've got time to watch hockey. you got time to... Cocky? I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> but, you know, clean. time to lean, time to clean. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a fun one. You never heard that? Uh, maybe I have somewhere, but it's, I've lived a long life. I don't know. I've heard a lot of shit. You've had three. I think you've had two jobs your whole gig. No, I've had a bunch. All right. I bartended. I worked at Sears. I worked at Fye. I worked at my uh, Derek's uncle's frame shop. Cut oh. my hand over one time. That sucked. Yeah, that seems like a boring gig. Framing. Oh well, we were slicing glass, cutting glass all the time. Jesus. And uh, that was tough. And then I pretended that my grandfather got sick and then never went back. But I, I kept dating the girl who lived in the same house as him. Dude. So that was a little dicey. Yeah, yeah. I worked at Filene's department store. Hey, not basement. Fluff and fold. No, no. We were upstairs. Okay. Hey, that's like Anne Frank. And then uh, what else? I think that might have been it. That's a good five. I got five, five. No, more than that. What are you, crazy? That was six. I got frame. I got filene. I got bartender. I got... Uh, 
FYE, FYE, whatever Sears. that is, Sears. That's oh, and fun. I was uh, I was a uh, plow. I did some some shoveling. What? My uncle plowed, and I had to get out and shovel all the walkways and shit. That was oh, under the table. That's adorable. That was fun. I did some plumbing work with my uncle too. What? Yeah, it's all pipes. Oh yeah, I was doing a lot of pipe pipe cleaning with my mouth. That plumbing is a uh, that's a wacky gig. He, the guy cleans out your toilet. You got a big cat, a dead cat in there, and he goes, uh, "That'll be nine million dollars." You're like, "Well, how do we get here?" Well, it's not a plum job. I'll tell you that. But you got that right. I prefer nectarine. Here's what I always remember: is hot on the left, cold on the right. Shit flows downhill. That's what my uncle would always say. That was like his, um, you know, mantra. His mantra, montage. I see. Eric Montrose. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, shit flows downhill. That's a metaphor, of course. I don't get it. Well, everyone complains, Dad, if, if I'm shitty to you, you're shitty to your wife, and then she's shitty to the cat, and then the cat oh, shits on my mouth. Oh, I never shit heard that. Shit flows downhill. So when the boss is upset, the person, I'm not, I, I'm not saying I'm your boss and you're her boss, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It just all pays forward, but in a company... If the president's upset, he yells at the VP, and then they go and yell at the fuck. Hey, what are you guys doing out here? Right. And then they're assholes to the uh, shit flows downhill. I like. I thought it would be a plumbing metaphor. Well, it's plumbing also, meaning uh, if you got a shit pipe, point it down the hill. Got it. Got or it. if you're below the shit when the pipe bursts. You're yeah, getting it. Getting a mouthful of feces. So if something's going bad, you got to go high. Yeah. When they I go guess, low, we go high. I guess the point is, don't live at the bottom of the hill, because uh, you're going to get a world of shit coming at you from the plumbing station. You, you got that right. Yeah, which is basically what New Orleans is. Just a big town that lives on the bottom of a hill, and uh, <whistles> when that rain comes in, you're just mm-hmm. sitting in it below sea level. That was the DePaulo's joke. He goes, yeah, you decided to start your life in a soup bowl. Hey. Okay, Something like that. There was more to it. Yeah, he's funny. Very funny. Very uh, uh, Miller-influenced, clearly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I also <laughs> just did a little bit of a miller impression. But. That's true. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Native Deodorant. The smell of the holidays are different for everyone. For some, it's gingerbread and turkey. For others, it's your weird uncle's morning breath. We all had that touchy-feely uncle, didn't we? But now your favorite deodorant company wants to give you the gift of a new smell with Native's awesome new holiday-inspired scented products. I love Native. It looks good. It smells good. The lady uses it, and she's a real bloodhound. She's got a nose like a honey badger. So if she likes it, you know it smells great. You know it feels great. And it's good for you. It's a little more organic, a little more natural. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. Native products are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil. You can smell great all day long. Also, some classics. Uh, Classic scents for everyone. Try their holiday scented deodorant, body wash, or toothpaste in scents like candy cane, sugar cookie, and fresh mistletoe. Build yourself or loved ones personalized product bundles by mixing and matching three of your favorite holiday scented products into a set. Stay merry, stay happy, and stay fresh this holiday season. You will love Native's limited time seasonal products as much as I do. Go to nativedeodorant.com and use your Tuesdays with Stories to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com. Code Tuesdays with Stories, one word, for 20% off. NativeDeodorant.com. Code is Tuesdays with Stories. Get on it, folks, and smell better today. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Keeps. More than 50 million guys in the U.S. are going bald. I'm talking about you, cue ball. Oh, yeah. Look to your left, now to your right. If you got two guys sitting next to you, they're both going bald. And if they're not going bald, you better look at the mirror, boy O, because you're creeping back, baby. That hairline is like the coastline in, in Venice. It's disappearing. And uh, you can't get it back. You got to keep what you got. Look, my hair's thinning. My dick is thin. It ain't pretty. You got to hold on to what you have. It's like a loved one. Look, you're not going to get laid again by some new person. Hang on to the person you got. And it's the same with your hair. It's going, and you're going to put it off, and you're going to put it off, and we all do it, and you're in denial. 
but you've seen that line creeping back on your forehead. Next thing you know, it's going to be in the middle of the head and then behind, then behind the fucking ears, and now you got a, sh- a horseshoe cooking. And you're going to go, oh, I wish I could reverse time. Well, get on it, folks. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair treatments start at just $10 per month. Boy, that's worth it. See a virtual doctor to get medication delivered straight to your house every three months. You don't even have to leave your home. There are only two FDA-approved drugs out there to prevent hair loss. Good news, Keeps has got both of them. Woo-wee! Everything comes in a discreet package. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, but it's worth it. Keeps will help you keep the hair you have and prevent further balding. If you're ready to take action, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tuesdays, uh, plural. Get your first month free. Hey, that's pretty good. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tuesdays. Get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tuesdays. And keep your hair. Thank me later. Tuesdays with Stories is also sponsored by Liquid IV. I love Liquid IV. Look, everybody has their morning routine, their daily routine. You get up, you brush your teeth, you shit shower and shave, you have a little breakfast, and then you go jog. Then you go to work. Then you hit the gym. Then you take your vitamins. Then you stretch and play the piano and rub one out. We all got it. Well, guess what? It's flu season, so support your immune system with proper hydration and vitamins. I drink a lot, I fly a lot, I exercise a lot. These are all things that burn that liquid inside you. You got to stay hydrated. When you're hydrated, it's like a car with oil. You got to be well-oiled. It's the only way to keep the joints afloat and the cricks and the cracks down. You got to hydrate. And one stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. I drink a couple of these a day. Why the hell not? You know, that way I have a few pops at night and I don't feel so bad because I've been liquid IV and all morning, baby. Get on it. Healthier than those overpriced sugary sports drinks. No artificial flavors or preservatives. Less sugar than an apple. You can't beat it. Made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy, and soy. Not too bad. They're supporting frontline workers to stay healthy. Liquid IV has donated 11 million servings so far to hospitals, EMS, food banks, veterans, and active military. Jesus, these are good guys. So just for you gays, we got a little treat for you. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart or get it delivered. Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order. Get better hydration today using promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. I got bags of this stuff over here. It's good stuff. It tastes good. It feels good. Go hydrate and get sloppy, folks. Thanks a lot. I have another job. Might have been another job out there. I haven't had a job since I moved to New York, though. That's impressive. Other than comedian. The, the, you went to the most expensive city in America and didn't work. Yeah. Well, and people are always like, wow, how'd you do that? And I'm like, well, I had three roommates. Yeah. I lived in a seven-foot room. Right. My electricity was turned off a bunch. Yep. I borrowed money from everybody I knew. I was completely broke. I ate nothing but SpaghettiOs. Big booze It's not bag. like I was like doing well. Right. Yeah, I think I moved here. I've had probably seven jobs here alone. Wow. I mean, furniture mover, uh, temp. Temp is the worst gig ever because mm-hmm. every day is your first day. Oh. And it's a new place. you got to get. This is Sheila. She's in accounting. This is Betty. She does the files. And you're like, ah. And you're hungover. And you got a, you know, a tube top on and a jizz in your hair. And it sucks because they just call you randomly. You know, you're like, uh, hello, and you have to take a call at 6 a.m. They go, can you be in today? Jenny died. You got hit by a bus. You go, all right, I'll be there. Do you know how to plumb or do you know how to weld? They're like, I'll figure it out. Brutal gig. That's why I could never do it because anything day of, I'm like, oh. I'm out. I already have my day planned. I know. I'm like, I got, I'm watching Seinfeld yes. season six, <laughs> beginning yes. to end. Exactly. And I was going to sleep till three and it's 6 a.m. I went to bed at five. Um, I'm in bed with a man still. Can't do it, but I, I would have to do it. I was broke. I feel that way with restaurant workers and firemen. There's all this covering. 
I can't cover for somebody. I'm like, I already uh, made my plan. A lot of covering. Like, hey, I need you to come in and work my uh, my shift. And I'd be like, nah, nah, I can't do that. I'll tell you what, though. When they cover for you, it's pretty good. I know. I'd be that guy. I'd be the guy that always needs covered but yeah. doesn't want to cover. Yeah, no cover. Uh, duvet. I'd be like, hey, listen, I got tickets to the Bruins game. Can you cover my Oh, you got it. And then three days later, like, hey, my mom, is her tits fell off, and she's going to die tomorrow. I'd be like, well, I can't be you working. Don't, you don't really need tits. I got to catch them movie yeah <laughs> going to see showgirls but yeah it's true uh there was always that one guy though i used to work at a mexican restaurant Caso. jj's yeah jj's <laughs> and uh that there was always that one lady who was like you want your show i got it. I, got, I got seven kids right. i got a car payment i got aids i'll take it yeah, some people need the shifts. That makes sense. Thank god for that lady. I never I never appealed to me to do any work cuz i'd rather Money wasn't that important to me. Same. Like, I want my day. I just want to be yes. able to watch, uh, you know, fucking uh, Goodfellas again. Right. But they're right. like, yeah, it's a big shift. It's a big night. You'll make 300 cash. I'm like, ah, I'll figure something out. I got to watch know. Forrest Gump. I used to wait tables and I would give my day. You want, who wants, I got a 12 top. That's too, I can't handle a 12 top. Like, you have no other tables. It's a Friday. There's no one in here. And I, I can't do it. I can't carry 12 plates. You take it. And then there'd always be a guy who took it. Yeah, it's tough. So I'd be at work not making money, but I'm there. I should work while at work, but I still didn't want to do it. Yeah. I went to work. I drove to Filene's one time, a couple times, with the shirt, the tie, the slacks, the socks. Got there and looked like a Larry David. I was like, nah, I can't. Can't do it. Can't go in. And like, you, that's all the hardest parts is yes. getting dressed and getting in the car and going there. But I was like, I just can't face it. It's funny because Woody Allen said, uh, what is it, 80% of life is showing up. Like, if you go to the gym, you'll probably work out. But you prove it. You're the 20 percenter. You're yeah. like, yeah, I'm here and I'm still not going in. Blow me. Yeah, it's hard. You just can't uh, do it. Even, I mean, even we, I shot this movie. Even that was like, again, today? Right. 12 it's hours? It's a lot. What? But don't you find that if you get over that hump, mm-hmm. you're kind of glad you did it? Yeah, it's, of course. It's a hard hump, but if you get past it, you're, you're, you're living life. Well, and you look back and like work when I bartended, when it was really busy, that's when it was fun. And also when I worked in uh, department stores. What's that called? What's the term? Retail. Retail. When I worked in retail. December was the best because Silent it would just retail. rip through. Right. Because you're just literally That's like, true. Doo, 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 doo. it Holidays. never stops. And you're like, whoa, it's three o'clock already. Right, right. It's when nobody's there that you're like, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, that clock. You're just staring at it and just, just jizzing right on your face. It won't move. The best job was Sears because I worked loss prevention. I'm sure I've talked all about it. Oh, you're it. running it around. The best. I mean, because you're just, you, well, we had cameras. We had 82 cameras, motion detect, the whole thing. Yeah. And you're in there watching people. And you can get weird in there. And then you yes. walk the floor. And you're like, I'm going to go out on the floor. And you, you're just walking around. And you, when you catch shop with that heart rate skyrockets Woo! and you're running and chasing them, it was the best. Well, you're doing stuff. You're not just behind a, a register. Or you're not just folding clothes or bagging groceries. You're doing something. You're out there stopping crime. You're, you're interacting. The best day when I bartended, we had it was a cop bar, which I always say if I was going to open, I know people hate the cops, whatever, but if I was going to start a bar or open a bar or whatever, you make it a cop fireman bar because oh, you have drink. no problem. No, and they're at security. You stay open late. You go, no one's going in there and starting shit because it's fucking cops everywhere. Right. And they drink and they, they're union guys. They bring in all their friends, the fundraising, all that shit. So I worked at a cop bar and one of the cops tragically killed himself. Ah. Yeah, but... That night, like, hey, listen, uh, you know, so, so-and-so killed himself. Tonight's the, the funeral or the whatever, Irish wake, wake thing. Yes. So they're like, we brought in a second guy. He's going to be your bartender. But I'm like, Bar- I don't need a second guy. I'm a bartender. And they're like, you need a second guy. And oh, it was like one yeah. of those things where he's like, hey, we'll be working together. I do this. You move over there. Watch my ass. Touch <laughs> yeah. me. And then, like, it was like the door opened, and it just... Bang! He just piled oh, in. Oh like, yeah! I mean, we had people seven deep, packed out into the street. I made like four hundred bucks. This is two thousand and one. Four hundred bucks cash. I was like eighteen years wow. old, nineteen years old, and we split it. So we made eight hundred dollars in Woo-wee. tips because everyone's just crying and let's have another one for Jimmy. Yeah. Ah, cha, cha. and it was it was wild, and everybody was hammered, crying, sobbing. I love it. But I didn't have that much con- I knew the guy, but I didn't have much connection to him. So I just left with like a fit just bursting out. And then the guys would be like, have a shift drink. And I'm like, I can't. I'm 19 years old. I got to drive. They like, don't care. And they're like, what towns are you driving through? And I'm like, Brockton, Stoughton, and Whitman. They're like, 
Uh, who's on tonight? Uh, Sully. You got the Give hookup. the kid a beer. And they're like pinching my cheek and jerking uh, me off. I love and it. They handcuffed me for fun. And we got to go back me. to this bar. I think it's gone now. Uh, they probably got shut down because there's a 12-year-old serving martinis. Oh, it was so fun. But uh, a lot of times it sucked because it, it was quiet. But that day, man, we were just rock. Because you're just like, bang, bang, bang. It was like uh, hip to be square or whatever the fuck that... Uh, Huey Lewis. Hippie, hippie shake. Ah, uh, yes. I picture Cocktail. you just barely looking over the bar. You got a rag over your shoulder. You're passing up mugs full of beer. It's all spilling on you. Well, speaking of mugs, I mean, as ugly as I am now, picture me at 17. I mean, I had pimples. My, uh, my teeth were worse. I was like, whoa, hello. Miller. Yeah, that's adorable. I did a Mech Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, that wasn't and, even around then. And beers were like a buck and a quarter. Yes. It was a domestic draft was two and a quarter. Domestic bottle, 250. Woo! Two and a quarter. You do some buybacks with the with the pigs? Oh, I was shoving them right up their ass, all of them. I, there was a couple, you know, cops that... that Beat a kid. I gave them free drinks. So. <laughs> you don't get beat. What, what about a couple of uh, like cougar ladies in there? Huh? They must have been all over. Look how cute. He's so lanky. A lot of cougars, but I didn't get the cute because I, I think now I'd get the cute. Mm. He's cute. He's got something. But back then, I mean, I was a pole. Right. Just Bean a string. big street lamp with a pair of glasses and braces on. Right. Right. You look like that uh, that guy on the on the windows with the uh, just a paper clip with glasses. Yeah, that was you that know? guy. The, you were that guy. Yeah, it was bad. Damn. But, but good times. But it was pretty fun, yeah, I got to say. It was it was nice. See, what's hard for me about a gig is even a bar, that sounds fun. I would have been sneaking a few schnapps under the table. But, oh, yeah. But it's hard being trapped in a place for that long for me, eight hours. To me, if, if I ever had an office job, which I had a lot of and I hated all of them, but they'd go, uh, oh, we got to get this delivery over to the Johnson & Johnson factory. They had a blood clot over there. And I go, I'll do it. Right. Oh, I love getting out. Then you're, you're like, oh, my God, you're in the sun. You're like Brooks and yes. Shawshank. Like, whoa, yes. oh, my God. And, and then the, the wind hits your face. And you're like, ah. And then you, you get a sandwich. You, you, you pet a dog. It's great. I still feel that way. I remember when I went through my big breakup that woman just really cut my dick off and yeah. fed it to my dad but she was tough <laughs> i was um, Good day you, for the dad though <laughs> <laughs> i remember going to canner's bar jason canner who was like my lord and savior or whatever you call it friend that's I, it he would bartend at the <laughs> mansfield which is where sarah bartended too uh-huh which one time this is sad this is before i dated sarah i showed up to go drink for Cantor. And then he wasn't there, but Sarah was, because they would trade ah. shifts. And she was like, hey, how are you? you? You came by to see me? And I was like, ah. I didn't think to go. I was like, nah, I'm looking for Jason. Ah, you chooch. I should have been like, that's right. Yeah, of yeah. course. You got to wing it. But I was so heartbroken at the time and obsessed you with my ex. Think. I couldn't even think about this woman who was just cute and like, ah, oh, you came to say hi. And I was like, ah. no, I didn't come. to. I'm looking for Canner. Ooh. Oh boy, that must have crushed her. It's big and a heartbroken. And then I didn't even hang. He was ah. like, "Oh, he's off today." And I was like, "Ah, shit. All right. Well, take care." <laughs> Fucking idiot. Yeah, no signal. Not picking up what she's putting down. But hey, it all worked out in the end. You guys are divorced. Yeah, it's fine. But um, but anyways, I would go to the Mansfield and hang out with Canner, and then he would have this. Th- I would just drink the whole shift, and uh, he'd be like, "Ah, oh, we're out of limes." So I go, "I go. I was yes. limes." Because I felt like, "Let me do something." Yeah. Because I'm out. just sitting here drinking for free the whole time. Right. Oh, you would get the limes. I'd go get As the a limes. Patron. I'm like, I'll go. And he's like, really? Is that okay? And he'd look at the manager and he'd give the high five or thumbs up, whatever I just did. Yeah. And I'd go down to Gristini's or whatever, buy some limes. And, and they'd reimburse? Like, yeah, it felt like service. It was nice. Don't you feel like, and it, we had so much time back then. I feel like eight, we do eight podcasts. You're doing, you got to watch 12 movies just to talk to Ron on. And then we got eight specials cooking. We got uh, this and that. We go to L.A., we go to on the road, we go to the cellar, we do this, we touch the cat. Back then, you had a day to kill. I it know. was almost hard. You're like, what, do, what else do we do? Should we go to Chuck E. Cheese? Let's get a couple golf balls, go out to the ocean. You know, you had to find things to do. It's the worst. I don't do well with time. I don't either. And if I'm too swamped, I'm stressed, and I lose my mind. It's, there's a balance. you got to find a balance. That's so true. And the people probably hate hearing it because some people are working and roofing and doing all this stuff. But mm-hmm. an empty day is not great. It, it it seems great on paper. You go, woo, tomorrow I'm going to make a grilled cheese. I'm going to jerk off and put it on the grilled cheese and eat it. And then I'm going to go to the amusement park. 
But you don't. You just start going, I'm not doing enough. I'm lazy. I'm gay. I feel bad. And then, then it all goes to hell. Well, I'm trying to do a bit about this. I think the worst thing that ever happened to everybody is saying, live life to the fullest. You got to oh, live life to your fullest. Oh, interesting. Because yeah, now, whenever I'm watching Goodfellas again, I'm like, I should be watching a new movie. Then I put on a new movie, and I'm like, I don't like this movie. Right. And then now with the business, I mean, it's all content. content. It, it makes me want to just shoot myself, and I fall behind because I can't do content. But I'm like... I don't want to do it, I, but you're like, I, you can't even watch a game. I'm watching the World Series being like, I should tweet. I'll live tweet it. <laughs> so then I'm trying to watch a <laughs> game, and I'm like, huh. I'm just trying to think of a fucking tweet. It's always ends up game. just being like, hey, I took a shit and showed it to my parents. Right. Throw that out there. <laughs> it's tough. That's not bad. I'll retweet that. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's not bad, but yeah, no, it's, it's tough, and you can't win. And then before you know it, it's all gone. You're like, wow, I'm 48. What, yeah. what the hell did I do? And then you, you had all this time, and you wasted it going, what should I be doing? Should I be doing this? Should I be tweeting? And then it's gone. Well, that's the real key is to accept whatever you're doing as what you're doing and connect to that activity. Yes. Like right now, we're podcasting. It's a nice time. We're entertaining some people. Sure. It's the weirdest thing with podcasts. We did a live one last night, which you got to join Ooh, the Patreon to get this fucking thing. Lunch. Nice. God, it was so good. Magical evening. I think last night's was so good that this episode is like suffering. We're hung over. Uh, I'm like, I, feel I'm, like, I feel like this is solid. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's it's yesterday was so insane, insane that I'm like I feel like physically and emotionally drained from it. Unbelievable. I mean, it was a live audience at a dome outdoor, and the crowd was just ripping and rapping, and we were cooking. It was four funny kooks, and uh, it was it just it all came together. We sold out of posters. Uh, we had a couple beers. We drove back. It was great. Hot crowd. I mean, they were hot. Hot. They really gave it up on a few lines I had that stunk, and they still saved me. So uh, you guys are the real heroes out there in Royersford. Sean Patton, Shane Gillis. I mean, it was just Bang! It was a banger. Everything. It was, a banger. It was laughs. Wall the wall. Maybe our best live episode. Possibly the best. Best crowd. Best group of guys. Best flow. Best zingers. Best night. Insane. Best so, in show. So good. And uh, I forget why I brought that up. Uh, connecting. You got to connect. To oh, where you're at. I was going to say about podcasting. It's so weird because there's like ninety thousand people listening to this. That's crazy. But we're just sitting here talking to each other. It's so interesting. Theo Vaughn pointed that out. I did his pod, and he's like, more people are going to watch this than The Tonight Show tonight. And I'm like, that is insanity. It's very bizarre. And we're just talking, and there's a little black square over there. Yeah. That for a BLM. Is representing like 100,000 people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But what does that say about our society? Not to get too cheese dick over here, but... It obviously is a lack of connection, a lack of something, if people have to watch two cum guzzlers chop it up for an hour. Well, I don't think it means that. That's, we're entertaining. We're funny. Okay, okay. I, I mean, th- back in 1381, the jester would come down and juggle and talk about fucking his dad in the mouth and feeding him a dick, probably. I think if you throw this out there in 1988, people go, what the fuck is that? Was oh. this some kind of public access show? Who, who would watch that? Who are these guys? People watched it. Siskel and Ebert were huge in 1988. They were talking about movies or whatever, and uh, Howard Stern. Ah, good point, good you know, point. There's plenty of people. That's People true. talking. Stern I mean, was fun. Stern, he was big. Yeah, big people vomit. like to be entertained. We're entertaining. It's okay. not like we're just uh, talking about, you know. I'm always looking for a dumb, bigger message. So I always want to find it. No, nah, I think we're doing great. Nah, this is entertaining. I'm not to take away from me, uh, us blowing each other. I'm just saying I wonder why podcasts are, are, have boomed. I think it's funny, and it's, okay. and it's also like unadulterated. There's no corporation. Ah, that's interesting. We're saying filth, flour, and filth over here. You got that right. And you know my, my theory enough. about what people really love. People like watching friends have fun together. They do. Look at the Jokers. That's my thing. That's my theory. People really love... Is there anything more fun than watching bloopers of a TV oh, show? You're like, look man. at them. They're having fun. Elaine and Kramer laughing off screen. I mean, it's gold. She kicks him in the balls on accident. He's like, Jesus Christ. And then she loses it. And then they go, cut, cut. And you get to see behind the scenes a little. It's authentic. Yes, it's sports. When the guy hits a home run, they come in the dugout, and they're all putting their arms around, punching him, and he's smiling. They're all laughing. They do the secret handshake. 
Jake. Sure. People like to watch people having a nice time. They really do. That's why I, I'm so sick of people talking about it, which I shouldn't bring it up because now I'm talking about it. But you got to watch Ted Lasso. You know, in these crazy times when everybody's uh, burning each other alive and putting spikes in their dick, uh, he, he's fun. It's positive. I, I don't want to talk about Ted Lasso <laughs> because everyone will just hate me. I'm already the Sopranos guy. And everybody, blah, 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 blah. What about The Wire? Never saw it. Right. I, oh, actually, I did. I watched the first episode, and I hated it. All right, well, that just we got talked you a whole it. new batch of enemies. We talked about it here, and I know it's great. <laughs> I'm wrong. You're right. Don't fucking at me. You're better than me. I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. I'm going to kill myself. There but I go. just felt like it was like, all right, stick him up, buddy boy. What? Get out of here, fuzz. It just felt like... The wire? Yeah. Well, you got to make it a little blacker than that. Well, whatever it is. I can't remember. It was nah. 10 years ago, but I'll get the shit. But Ted Lasso, is, I mean, I, don't people write for it that we know? Ah, uh, shit. Good point. Forget I brought it up. Yeah. It's a hell of a show. I like Lasso's. But I... Uh, I found it appalling. I'll just say that. Let's keep it moving, though. It's <laughs> Man, just, yeah, we'll keep moving. The worst thing. By the way, it's the plot of Major League. That, that, that's true. But it's without, soccer, though, so it's okay. Edge or jokes, but whatever. I think people <laughs> write for it. It's good. Let I'm me sure. throw this one in your uh, anal cavity and see if it makes you orgasm. I'm sure it's great. I just don't care for it. There okay. you go. Yes. Good save. You don't have to like everything. No. I don't like pussy. So I'm not going to say who because it'll ruin the whole thing, but we were talking about getting over the hump, and once you get over the hump, it's not that bad, and being busy is better than sitting around. Somebody said... Uh, the best parts of life are the, are on the other end of fear, hmm. meaning, you know, you got stage fright. Okay, but then you got to go on. It's an eight o'clock show, and it's seven fifty eight, and you go, I can't do it, I can't do it, Johnny. Don't put me up there. I'm freaking out. And you go, you got to go on, man. It's at seven fifty nine now. You got to go on in one minute. I can't do it. Ah, you're shitting blood. You're crying. You go on, it's terrifying, you have a good time, the crowd laughs, you get off, you go, holy shit, that was exhilarating, I've never felt so alive. Or skydiving, you're looking out that fucking plane right. door, and you're terrified, you give, you'd give, kill your mom just to not jump. Right. You jump, you're terrified, the best moment of your life. Yeah, it's really relief, I suppose. It's like removing this uh, suffering. Uh -huh. You'd be like, oh, this is nice. Because I have moments after I leave the dentist, I feel like I'm walking on jizz. Right. I'm just, I'm, I'm just feeling the flow. Because you're like, oh, that's over. I got through it. It's great. Part of me wonders if, if wonders if you're addicted to that a little. Like, you you put yourself in these horrific situations, you get through it, and now you're living large. Well, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what we're saying. But uh, I mean, I've been the dentist in a year now, and I don't want to go back. But don't go back. But yeah, when you you feel it, it feels good to be because it gets all the dopamines yep, and yep. Uh, serotonin and serotolomash. It, it gets it all flowing. Yeah, yeah. And anything is like that. It doesn't even have to be fear, too. I would I would argue. Uh, you know, you you get your shit together and you build something. You build a table. And it's hell. You got to sand the wood and saw it and nail it and drill it and queef on it. And then it's done. And you go, that was hell. But now I got a table. It, it actually makes the table more valuable and more fun. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Maybe we should just make me think we should try anal. Ooh. I'm afraid of it. It sure. seems painful. And at the end, you have a table. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, you, I, you can use my back as a table. It might be nice. You, you pull it out and you go, whoo, it feels great. Well, for one of us, it's going to be better than the other. Oh, I wasn't saying us. It was oh, going to be us. Oh, I thought you'd be me and you right now on uh, camera with I, the cat watching. Patreon. Mm. But uh, I think that live up is coming out Thursday. Patreon. Is that right? That Chuck said in a couple Chuck days. Chuck said Thursday. He's got some uh, magical wizardry cooking over there. He, he did the whole thing. Chuck sat out there in the freezing cold with no jacket, filmed everything, took photos, did the audio. The guy's a goddamn grand wizard. That's right. He's, he's good. That was an ill-timed yawn. But, Bad uh, yawn. Yeah, it was great. Wow, I'm just exhausted. I was stressed out yesterday or last week, whatever it was. We went to the live. I'm pitching a show to a network. So I had to do that. I had to do a podcast with Ron on. I had to get up early to do something. And it was just so stressful. And then driving back in the pouring rain, those live yeah. podcasts, speaking of the, what we're talking about. You're stressed because you have nothing planned. Oh, yeah. Okay, just pulling out of fat air. And you can just bomb every one. It's like, it's like being an athlete. You're like, I went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Yeah, you get the yips. Yeah. So I, I definitely got the yips. On the, on the walk up the stairs to the stage, I go, you're going to suck. You're not going to think of anything. And I go, what are you doing, man? You're, you're supposed to be my brain. Why do you do that? Yeah. 
I get that when my head hits the pillow. Hey, remember that time you wet the bed in 88, you know, and your dad's gay and your mom's weird and your brother sucks cock? I don't know. I get it in the morning bad. I got oh, the that morning. to-do list. It's like someone threw a to-do list grenade into my face. Mm. You wake up and you're like, all right, well, don't forget, you got to go for a run. You got to stretch. You got to buy your mother some pearls. You got to uh, get your dad an anal bead. And, sure. Uh, you got to work out and all that shit. Yeah, the, the, the tattoo does. I wonder if, I mean, it's a cheesy joke, but you're, you're mourning in the morning. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there's something there. Nah, probably not. Mm. But more, you know, you're at a funeral and you're like, this sucks. And you know what else sucks? Getting up early. I did write a, uh, I wrote a, sh- a short called Good Morning, about a guy whose wife dies, mm. and uh, he just starts fucking everybody. It's Good Morning. Oh, that's good. Like he's more, he's like, ah, oh, more, and then he mourns, he talks to women, he's like, I'm just so sad, my wife is dead, and she's like, oh my God, is there anything I can do? And he's like, well, you keep me company. Yeah, you can blow That's somebody. Good Morning. Good Morning Wood. Not mad. I feel, it feels very Larry David. Well, he's the he's best. He's good. He's yeah. good. You see the new Curb? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was very long. A little long. A lot of setup. A lot of setup, but it was very good. Albert Brooks is great. JB had like three lines in a row. I was crying laughing. When he was interviewing Mary uh, Mary Ferguson's, I won't say why, but I was like, this is great setup. This is great writing. This is great, uh, great premise. Yes. All right. Now we're talking about TV shows. Let me just, just double show. check the what camera. Make the... sure it's still video camera. We got a, a, the, our camera fucked up. We yeah. still good? We're good. All right, you got a lot of space. By the way, recently I went on a phone diet, like space, got rid of, made space. Uh huh. Feel like great. What do you mean? You deleted videos? I deleted all kinds of videos, tons of photos. Then I deleted tons of voice memos. Oh, that's what kills the phone. Oh, I got years on there. Yes, anything that's not labeled, just delete, 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 delete. Because I'll label. Killer set, all new, headline, right. this is my album. Right. If anything I don't label, it, it wasn't memorable enough. Then you're like, this is three years old. I have, when am I going to listen to this? That's true, and it's already a special now. Exactly. Good the point. stuff's over, so I delete, and, you, and then you got to go to permanently delete, and it was uh. like... You know when you look at your storage, it's like there's like a sliver yes. of... It, it went... Boop. Oh! Yes. Now, are you going... Delete, delete. I mean, you taking the time and swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah. Swipe left. Yeah, I deleted tons of stuff, freed up a ton of space. Then there's attachments, videos. I have so many videos that are just like a slow-mo of me like flicking my dick from one side to the other. Oh, yeah, I'd like to send, send me that. Dick is like... <laughs> That's funny. You don't got to go easy on the flick. Yeah, you can't... Uh, you Tracy wanna... flick. <laughs> Casey F. flick. Yeah, you don't want to nail it on that one, but... Uh... I've had some friends flick my dick before, and I still haven't talked to them. That was in, like, you know, 71. I hate these dick flickers. I never got it. <laughs> it's a bad breed. Never one, got it. One time uh, I was sitting there like this, just, like, reading a comic book back in the 40s, and the, my friend came up with a Hot Wheel track and just, hi yeah, got me right in the cons. Oh. I, I, I saw red. I killed his dad. <laughs> I freaked out. <laughs> Brutal. Who I did does that? I know my uncle a couple of years ago. We were playing cornhole, as always. That's all I ever do in my family. And he just whipped a bag, a, a cornhole bag, at my dick. That's pretty good. And I went, you're a fucking jackal, you fucking scumbag, <laughs> you fucking asshole. It's always you doing this shit. I mean, I went crazy. I was like fucking Earl <laughs> Weaver, just screaming at him and kicking dirt on his shins. And uh, everyone was like, Jesus, that was insane. But I'm like, you don't hit a dick. What about, was it ball? It was ball, yeah. yeah it was like a bag. And, it, and that ball bag, you just it's like staggering. It's so bad. I just don't get it. I'm like, that's your humor? You're inflicting pain on me unsuspectedly? Yeah, but it's ball funny. pain. So it's fu- it makes it funny because it's a private part. No, it's dangerous. I mean, I, you know, your fucking balls could swell up. I can't jizz. I can never have a child. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, I don't get it. Yeah, no, it's not good. It's not good quality humor. It's no, uh, you know... Fluffy or Ralphie Mae, but it's uh, it's a quick jolt, I guess. But I don't like humor that's like, wait, so you're having a good time and I'm upset, I'm hurt. But let's say uh, you flicked it at Ari and Ari went down, and we're all laughing. I'd feel awful. I'd okay. be like, I'm sorry. That's a bully. That's called a bully. That's called a bully. But he's gonna be fine in two minutes. It'd be one thing if you cut his toe off and we all went ah. 
ah! And you're like, well, the guy's missing a toe. What are we in the mob here? Oh, my Pesci? I'm just like, all right, I'm going to fucking punch you in the face when you're not expecting it. That's my humor. That's ah. funny to me. That's what I think is funny. Interesting. You got a big, ugly Jew. Now I'm like mad at Ari for something he didn't do. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you got a big, ugly face. I'm going to fucking blast you with my fist. It's going to hurt. And then, uh, but you'll get over it. It won't hurt after a while. I get but it's something funnier about the balls. I guess balls so, are but funny. it's so sensitive. It is. I'd rather get punched in the face than punched in the balls. No, I'd take the balls. Uh, I don't think so. I don't want either, but you don't really get black balls. No, you get black balled. That's true. From, uh, you know, saying what, what what everything, <laughs> everything we've said in this podcast. And then there's blue balled. Blue balls is, you almost came. Black ball. I don't know what the uh, etymology is or whatever yeah, that is. I think you got it. Is that right? Yeah. What's the ophthalmology on ophthalmology? Good point. I have a point. Latin, I think. Ah, yes. Latinx. Hmm. The Hispanic people. How did they get Latin? I think we covered this. We're in repeats. Oh, yeah. Good point. You know, Latin was these Greek homos who were fucking each other in the ass and doing the Olympics and gymnastics and naked and uh, mythology, and then they made Latin, and then we... So it's all based on Latin. Everything comes back to Latin. And then Latinos. How would we get here? Good question. Maybe Spain. Spain. Europe. Spain. Yeah, Spain. The Spaniards Hispanic. went to South America, Latin America. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Spanish conquerors. La Camacha. What, what's that guy? Don Quixote. Ah. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. Forget I brought it up. But, yeah, I like a roast. Because at least you can be like... Ah, you hurt me, but that was clever. Right, right, physical, yeah. Physical pain. I, I, I have no interest in physical pain in sex or humor. And I don't love it in movies. You know, like the Three Stooges. I'm like, ah, this is this is boring to me. Uh, exactly. They're hitting each other. I'm like, that's terrible. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, and it, you feel bad for the people. But I guess it's cartoony where they go, rah, 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 and knock his nose off, but it's not actually off. I thought that was sports bloopers. Like, look at these two guys. They ran into each other. I'm like, that's terrible. Yeah, that's, that's funny. True. True. <laughs> That's not funny at all. The guy's injured. I know. And if they show a trailer for a comedy movie and the guy gets hit, hit in the balls by a rake immediately, I'm like, ah, oh, this ain't going to be great. Right. It's going to be a weak comedy, but uh, we got to wrap this thing up here. Oh, yeah. We well, got, uh, where, where are you going to be there, Fatty? Well, big November. I keep plugging it. Uh, Portland Helium, November 11th to the 13th. That's next week. Um and uh, November eighteenth to the twentieth, Zany Chicago. That's a big one, big city. Love that city. Haven't been there in a couple of years. Bring in Matt Wayne. Get the tickets. Small room. They'll sell out. So please get some tickets. And then Providence Comedy Connection, November twenty five and twenty six or twenty six, twenty seven. Whatever that's nice. after Thanksgiving. And join the Patreon for God's sakes. We got that live app. Ep- we're, we're recording another live app ep- this Thursday at Skankfest in two days from now. Yes. So there'll be two live eps, including the one we just recorded with Sean Patton and Shane Gillis. It's an hour and a half. Wall-to-wall laughs. Yes. And thanks again to everyone that came out and everyone that's on the Patreon already. We love you. We appreciate it. You're wonderful. Yeah, and Chuck, you should get Chuck going down to Rhode Island with you. Get oh, a, yeah. Get a couple of film things on tape. Queef. Hot gay queefs or Hot whatever. Hot gay anal. Sets. And then uh, I'm going to be in Vancouver, uh, Charlotte, Atlanta, Ah, uh, shit. I got some other ones. New Orleans, Milwaukee. So, uh, marknormancomedy.com. Check out our specials on YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. Get on the Patreon. Buy a shirt. We're, we're, we're cooking on a studio. Shelby's yes. uh, nipping at the heels of some studio queefs. And, uh, yeah, tell a friend and keep on keeping on. Praise Allah. Georgia say, got it. <laughs> <laughs>